is our Thanksgiving um, banner, and we are going to use this Rock Lawn cloth, R O C L O N, and it is blackout um, drapery, blackout fabric. And so you get it in Joann's, at, and it'll be on a bolt, and so it'll be backed by the uh, decor fabric and things like that. And they probably won't know what it's called, but you want the the, the blackout um, version. They have a whole bunch of different drapery lining fabrics there. The reason this month we're going to use this, we've been doing canvas and wood banners and things like that. <clears throat> but this month, my pattern, I don't know if you can see it or not, I had to go with leaves. I just couldn't get around it. But this month, um, this time what we're going to do is we're going to cut all of, because this um, fabric doesn't curl on the edges and stuff, what we're going to do is we're going to cut out all of the leaf shapes at the bottom so that it'll be kind of a little bit lacy and, un, you know, have that just leaf relief, if you will. So if we did that with canvas, canvas, canvas curls and it frays and does other things. This does not. And I've done a test batch on another project. So um, anyway, so what you're going to do is come up with a rectangle, the size of the pattern, and give yourself enough room to put a hem, which you could stitch at the top, and you don't need to hem the sides. So get your hem at the, and then don't cut the bottom into a point. So you'll just, after you're all done and painted, and you've got everything the way you want it, then you'll, you'll cut out with real sharp scissors all of the little leaf edges right there. Okay. We are going to use a roller, and we're going to do, there's the smooth side to this stuff, and then there's your rougher side. And we're going to do it, our um, painting on our rough side. We're going to use a roller because it'll be easier to get into all the little nickies and grooves and stuff. And we're going to make a mess on our paper, which is why I've got paper there. We will just squirt out some black paint and then give it a roll. When you put black paint on um, your piece like that, go real slow when you first start rolling it because it can um, it can splash on you. It spits a little bit. So get a nice even coat. You'll probably have to do it a second time. This doesn't dry the fastest. Um, it's about as bad as canvas is. So expect to have a couple hours drying time or you know put it in front of a heater or something like that. You can. You can iron this cloth, which is fantastic. So I've got a few wrinkles here because it was folded up. And so what I'm going to do is roll it out first. And when I decide if I'm okay with whatever, if I have still got wrinkles, then I'll take it and go iron it. Sometimes when you roll on a piece of material or something, you can get a texture that is really a little bit rough, kind of like little bumps and things like that. So I just take a sanding disc and just skim it. I'm not really sanding, I'm just taking the high points off. You never knew you could sand fabric, did you? Anyway, that just makes everything nice and back to where I needed it to be. Okay, one of the tips, uh, once you get it all base coated, um, you can go ahead and trace your leaf patterns, separations back on. One of the things that I did, and I know better, but I do it anyway, and so I'll just remind you guys, when you're going through and you're base coating your leaves and you trace your pattern, you don't have to trace all of this inside stuff. You can just trace just on the outside of all the leaves and then you don't have to trace the inside stuff twice. Um, so it's just a little step saver. When you're base coating these, um, the base coat color is Antique Gold plus um, Yellow Ochre. And when you, when you come into these leaf points, what you do is you, you get a little color and you put it on don't scoop up your paint, but you just take and slide your flat brush into the tip where it's pointy, and then that'll form really nice tips. The a couple of points also to make about base coating these. Um, if you're using your flat brush to pull in, oops, get you on camera. If you're using your flat brush to pull into you, and you notice that your chisel is going away, then it's time to wash the paintbrush because that means you've got too much paint in there. It's built up and then the end is like flaring out. Okay, this is what my first layer of um, base coat looks like. So you can see it's not very solidly base coated. So what I will do, um, the reason we didn't just go with antique gold right from the beginning all by itself is because it's very transparent. So I'm gonna do my second coat with trans with um, antique gold and just base it all over again because that other color will have cut it and hopefully I can get by with just this. So give everything a base coat one more time. 
with antique gold. Okay, so I am using milk chocolate and I am shading to separate these leaves. And hoping that I can, I want to get a bigger float though. I'm not happy with the size of this little float. So I went back and loaded more paint. As you get to the tip of the leaf, you're going to want the float to get a little bit skinnier. There's your fingers to blot. If we get everything separated, then we'll be able to, um, A, we'll be able to see where our leaves are. It'll clean up some of those chisel edges. It'll make us feel like we're not looking at a yellow mass, huh? This is good. This is a little bit boring right now, but I think that there's probably value to this, so I'm going to go ahead and just record. Once again, leading with my chisel and tucking the toe of my brush into those, um, oops, hit the line. And you can't, if you can't see around your brush, then you're going to have a hard time um, floating. So you need to make sure that you turn your project so that you can see um, where you're going. To these areas where a bunch of leaves all come together, um, feel free to just kind of almost wash or fill it in. Oops, going backwards. Notice I'm not making beautiful floats. I'm just defining things. They're not too stripy though. If they're too stripy then we're going to have a problem. Now what we want to do is we want to go back to where things are um, deeper. Okay, so that's going to be a wide, wide float. So what that means is maybe this leaf is further away and they're not like laying flat on top of each other. So I want to deepen the shading and make it wider in that area so like it's casting a bigger shadow but not all the way across. Okay so now that one's laying a little bit further we might want to deepen this area right here. Even like I said give it that wash to close it up so that that is a recessed little area. Okay now this is flipped up so this is going to be deeper. So, let's see how we doing. Maybe here's another one. Let's get these rolled edges a little bit wider. Okay, so that's flipped up. Maybe over here. So it's like wide there and then skinny back to here. Okay, so now that we have the larger shading on these, we're going to switch to our dome stencil. And mine's kind of mangled and stuff because it's been in a bag. But um, these are real stiff crescent stencil brushes and they're not flat ended, which is great because then it won't leave a sharp mark when we dry rub. We're going to load our paint. Let me get my palette out here. I'm going to load just a little bit of paint in the end. This is a dry brush, a dry paper towel, and dry paint, meaning that there's no water added to the paint. And it's not on a wet palette. Okay, and so I rubbed it off strongly on the paper towel. And now I'm going to rub yellow highlights up the middle. It doesn't show. Let me do it again with less rubbing on the paper towel. This is kind of a transparent color, so it might take just a little bit to get that going. I want there to be a little bit of a brightness up the middle of the leaf. Okay, so they're not such gold leaves. And a little bit more yellow. Okay, so get those up the middle of the leaves. Repeat on all of them. This is where redundant. Okay, we're going to do a combination of floating and rubbing, dry rubbing to establish the edges of some of these leaves. Gonna get, you're going to need to keep one of your dry rub brushes just kind of dirty to do what we needed to do. Put the paint on the brush, dry it off. Okay, let's 
pick on the other side of this leaf right here. Let's go ahead and rub it first. Bring it into the middle. See how that walks out just kind of like a float. Okay, bring it into that yellow area, but don't bring it all the way in. And that's about dry, so we can bring this over here, drag that in. Okay. So I'll work that until um, my paint kind of floats off or goes away. I'll go back and I'll strengthen. And then what we'll do is we'll bring it up to the edge with um, floats. dry crunchy little leaves here. Okay, so then sometimes that can be wet even though it's dry, but it can actually, because it, we're not using a whole lot of stuff to bind it to the surface, it can actually come off with water. So I'm going to go over here and we're going to float that stronger. And it'll be a bounce back and forth with this stuff to, to even things out. Okay, so we'll continue with this leaf and float on the other side. Remember, some of this, if we get it on the black, we can just um, cut out around it or re-black up to it. Okay, let's leave that where that's at right now. We'll deepen here next to our leaf. It's not too lonely looking. We could almost go a little bit heavier back here, but let's get some lines in there first. Okay, so we used our liner brush with 80% water, 20% paint. And we'll make some veins, nice and graceful. You can trace these on, but I find it almost easier just to go ahead and... If you line them without the lines, then you're not so shook up about whether or not they match exactly. So sometimes it can be just a titchy bit easier. And notice I'm starting up here on the line. Notice I'm having to get more water up here on the line, bring that out. Okay, so am I worried about this part where I have a lot more water in my brush than I had the first time? That's what's happening there. The good news is, is I know what to do about that. Alright, we're going to take, what color do we have here? Georgia clay. I'm going to do the dry rub with it. Let's bring that in. So we want to alternate these leaves. We don't want all brown ones next to each other and all red ones on top of each other. I'm going to have some alternating colors. Then we're going to diffuse it out. If we're going to travel a great deal with this redder color, which is actually Georgia clay, we don't want it very dark everywhere. We want it more in spots. I'm running out of paper towel. This uh, dry rub technique is really paper towel intensive. Here's all my yellow, and then I have no room for my orange. But you can flip them in and out and reverse them and stuff like that. And since it's dry paint mostly, it works pretty good. So see how I'm taking it from these tips? Oh, you can't see anything. But if we show you what we're doing. Okay, so see how I'm taking it from these tips and bringing it in without bringing it all the way up. It doesn't have to be the same on every tip. Maybe we want to leave that a little less and then bring maybe a little bit of red up into here. Deepen that. It doesn't have to be the same amount on each one. 
Okay, then we can deepen what we've done. Okay, time to change that paper towel. Put that in there. Rub it dub dub. Okay, now that's a little bit brighter leaf. Okay, and so then probably gonna need to float and do some things like that. Really walk a little bit of a line here with these um, these dry rub brushes, leaving them wet. You don't want the paint to get hard. But I did find a truly exceptional brush cleaner. Um, that is a Windsor Newton product, and it's on the website. It will take crusty, crusty, crusty hard paint out of brush brushes. So you know, if we leave that paint in there a little long, we can always go out and get it out of that brush. Okay. So we might need to walk that into that area right there. I don't want to leave any lines. And we don't want that leaf to become way weird from that leaf either. Or either. You say either, I say either. I can't sing. So we're just kind of kissing the edges of these leaves with these colors. Maybe we need to bring a little bit in here. It's kind of, um, when you're doing this, use your pictures. So you can kind of look and see, because there's way too many leaves and way too many nooks and crannies to really tell. Okay, it's the left edge of the bottom leaf on the right side to the... Okay, let me take, we need to do a liner brush. We're going to go back to the russet for that. So that's 80% water. Start up here at the top and we're going to have it flow. Like I said, if you can do this all in one fell swoop, it's really a good idea. Maybe a couple extras. And I think we might even could go back up here and deepen that, or that thicken it. Taper it down. Nice. Okay, I'm liking that. Now whether or not we want to add a little bit of cadmium red, you know, I'm really thinking we don't. I'm thinking I think that's red enough. We'll see what that looks like. Hmm. Okay, so that being the case, then this one's probably going to have to be brown. So we're going to repeat the brown steps um, on this leaf right here. Same as we did over here. It's just really a reverse image. I'm going to try giving it just a little hint of black plum where things are going to get the darkest. Don't want that real liney or real stripey. Right along here. This one's a little more liney because we're deepening just where it just gets darker. Okay, we'll probably want to come along here and deepen that. Okay. 